the 10th detainee in New York's notorious Rikers Island Jail died late last night of a suspected fentanyl overdose. The deceased was from Kentucky and in their 30s. Arrested on June 8 and charged with felony assault. The news came on the heels of Mayor Adams' announcement on July 10 that the state of emergency within DOC first declared in Emergency Executive Order No. 241, issued September 15, 2021, and extended most recently by Emergency Executive Order No. 128, issued on June 25, 2022, remains in effect. He further announced that the extension of Executive Order No. 241 for 30 days effectively admitting that additional extensions may very well be needed. The first detainee to die this year overdosed on fentanyl and heroin. The cause of death released on May 11. Just one day after another detainee was rushed to Elmhurst Hospital and pronounced dead there. On May 23, the New York Times ran an article about the crisis on Rikers Island. Reminding readers that despite orders to draw up a turnaround plan or face a federal takeover, the New York City jail system has failed to provide detainees with basic care. The article appeared less than a week after a New York state judge ruled that the Department of Corrections of the City of New York had failed to provide detainees with timely medical care. And Rikers is a very dangerous place for both detainees and staff. On June 22, 2022, Mayor Eric Adams was shown a fraction of over 2,700 makeshift weapons confiscated at Rikers. Dr. Robert L. Cohen revealed that there are about 45 new admissions a day. Only conducted 40 body scans for the entire month of May. Up through June 12, just seven body scans were done. According to Dr. Cohen, who spoke to the New York Post, this concerns him because scans prevent drugs coming into the facility and weapons. The Marshall Project revealed on its website that stabbings and slashings were up 450% at Rikers. In August 2021, the Post reported that the rate of stabbings and slashings is higher in EMTC than elsewhere on Rikers. Dr. Cohen visited Rikers in June. A retired physician, he sits on the New York City Board of Corrections and is very familiar with Rikers as a former director of the Montefiore Rikers Island Health Services. What he witnessed on that recent visit sounds like hell on earth. Not in American jail. The admission area. The intake facility. The receiving room was packed with screaming people. Where most new doc admissions are now processed and quarantined before they are assigned to a housing area. Some had been there for days. Adding. There were 100 plus people crowded into pens without basic. Basic services. Filthy pens without capacity to urinate in a urinal. Last September, the Otis Bantam Correction Center on Rikers was shut down due to deplorable conditions. Photographs obtained by the Post reveal detainees sleeping on the floor. Some on sections of corrugated boxes. They were denied adequate food and water, for days on end and lacked sufficient access to bathrooms. Floors were reportedly covered in human excrement. No detainee should have been confined to OBCC, for days on end. Detainees are to be assigned to a cell within 24 hours of admission. After OBCC was shut down last fall, admissions were transferred to EMTC, where Dr. Cohen observed inadequate access to, medication, clothes, bathrooms phone calls, expressing concern over detainees lacking transportation to court. In the pens, people can't get to court. This is the post-arraignment period.
and there is so much chaos there that they can't get back to court. Dr. Cohen says he has been to a lot of jails and many, many visits. But it was really frightening. I've never seen something as chaotic as this in the department. Could it be that detainees overdose after losing hope at Rikers? Yes. A letter addressed to the Honorable Laura T. Swain of the United States District Court. Southern District of New York dated September 23, 2021 expressed concern over the pervasive disorder and chaos in the New York City jails, including violence among incarcerated people, violence at the hands of staff and violence toward staff, in addition to a disturbing rise in self-arming behavior. And so it has continues 10 months later, with no end in sight.